Hi, um, today we're going to be going through a product demonstration for Project IC, Internet Computer Yield. IC is a decentralized lending protocol for the Internet computer. IC was created by Dylan Paul and myself, Malika Rawal. Dylan is a part of the Duke University Class of 2023, and he is majoring in computer science and minoring in finance. I am part of the class of 2024, and I'm majoring in economics and computer science while minoring in finance and doing the markets and management certification. So this demonstration will cover one, a summary of Project IC, two, how to start up IC on the internet computer, three, a backend code explanation, four, a candid UI interface demonstration, and finally, fifth, a front end display. So introducing IC. IC is a decentralized lending protocol for the internet computer. Um, it was inspired by Aave, which is pretty much the same thing, but on Ethereum. So IC is intended for users to lend, borrow, and earn interest on crypto assets without any intermediary involvement. This is what makes it so unique uh, because a normal, in, uh, a normal centralized system will use those intermediary involvements, um, but this is completely decentralized. And in IC, we use six canisters, a product canister, reserve, treasury, user A, user B, and a user assets canister. The user assets canister was used predominantly for the front end. So what exactly is a canister? A canister is a program that can communicate with other canisters, as well as it includes a state and behavior. So just like how nodes communicate on the internet computer, so do canisters. And currently IC can be deployed locally. Um, and that's how we did it this summer, but our hope is to deploy it globally in the future. User A and user B can also interact. So any user can create an account through the product canister uh, and they can go ahead and have their ICP tokens and psycho amounts kept track in the database. That also enables their functionality with the rest of the product canister. So users will receive receipts for transactions in terms of A tokens and A cycles that will earn interest. And once they earn interest, the user will need to go ahead and repay that loan plus interest to the lender. So um, now we'll go through deploying IC on the internet computer. This is uh, what we had to do throughout the summer um, because we deployed it locally. Uh, so just pulling this up real quick. I did it a couple of times before to test out the demonstration. So it's a little messy, but we'll go through the steps. Um, so first off, you'll have to go into your project directory. So I don't have a Mac, so I had to download Linux and Ubuntu so it'd be compatible. That's what the WSL is for. Um, you may not need that. And then I went into my directory into IC main, which is the name of the project. I started the effects in the background. So the effects start green background. And then after all of this, I deployed my DFX. Um, this typically takes a couple minutes because it creates each wallet, each canister individually. So these canisters um, are given by their canister IDs. And we use these canister IDs a lot because we use Candid UI, which is an interface created by the Definity Foundation. And to use that interface, you have to basically plug and chug these canister IDs into the website's URL. And then you can see all the functions in a pretty much a front end um, to make sure that it's working. So over here, you can see each canister ID and we can test these out through um, Candid UI. And Dylan will now go into the backend code and demonstrate through Candid UI. Hi, so this is the Candid UI and backend code part of the demonstration. And so currently we are looking at the code in Matoko of the IC pr protocol. So first thing that you're going to notice here is on the side we have um, product, reserve, treasury, user, and user one. And these are going to act as our canisters uh, for the IC protocol. 
So users are going to be interacting with the product canister. So let's take a look at that. And right now we're in the main um, file of the product canister. And you'll see that first thing that the product canister, first function that the product canister has is an open account because users are going to be prompted to open their account and add funds to their account before they can actually use the other functions that the product has to offer, such as lending and borrowing. So when a user opens an account, all they have to do is click on this function. And because it uses message.caller, it will create a user ID and initialize a new account with all their balances set to zero. So let's take a look at what this line is really doing is it's updating an account in DB, which is a database. So database is a file in the product canister. And if we take a look at that, it's pretty much just a hash map from user IDs to their accounts. So user ID, if we look in the types, is just a principle. So it's the ID of the user that is utilizing the application. And account is holds the balances of ICP cycles, AICP and A cycles. So it holds the balance of each of these tokens. And um, together, when a user clicks on it to open an account, it updates the account. And when it updates an account, it puts their user ID and their account. And it, for this function, it initializes all their balances to zero. So that's exactly what we wanted to see. And um, then users to utilize the other functions that the product canister has to offer that we're gonna go through in a second, they first have to add funds. So users will first supply their user ID. And for the simplicity uh, of this uh, demonstration, we've, we have two user canisters representing random users just to simulate what the functionality will look like in the future. So before I go into this function, let's look at what these canisters look like. So there are two user canisters. One of them is user and the other one's user one. They both have the same functions, except that user's user ID is user and user one's user ID is user one. And each of these can check their principal ID and their token balances. Moreover, these users, for the, for the purpose of this demonstration, how the IC is currently operating, have funds that they get from a treasury canister. Now, the treasury canister is responsible for minting arbitrary ICP and cycle tokens to give to the users so that they can interact with the um, IC product canister and therefore the, the product itself. So then we can see and test out functionality. So users will get these funds. They once again will create an account through the product canister and now they have to add funds to their, to their account. So add funds prompts the user for their user ID which token they want to um, supply to their account and the amount they want to supply. After this, it will update their account. So now they can have um, balances in their account so they can interact with the rest of the protocol. So first function is deposit. And the way this works is it's utilizing message.caller. So first it checks whoever clicks on deposit, their user ID first had to be created. So now they have an account that's in the hash map. And when you click on this function, it checks for which users um, utilizing the function and therefore it checks their balances in their account. So now this ensures that you have the correct amount of balance to deposit and um, users can then specify if they want to deposit cycles and ICP and in return, they'll receive A cycles and A ICP into their account, which acts as a receipt for their deposit and earns interest, which is the purpose of lending to a decentralized lending protocol. They also have the ability to redeem their tokens. So let's say they want to get back their um, cycles or ICP. Users can then supply um, their A cycles into this redeem function. Once again, all they have to do is call on it because it's using message.caller. And if they have the correct amount of A cycles actually in their account, they'll get that same exact amount of cycles or back. And the same works for A ICP and ICP. Then we have the borrow functionality. So users can borrow cycles, for instance, if they have a correct amount of AICP, which is really just being held as collateral. And this is utilizing something called a minimum ratio, which we arbitrarily sent to two, but a regular, um, later on, this will be a very dynamic number and constantly changing. 
So then this determines how, how many um, cycles or ICP a user can borrow. And um, then if they want to repay this loan, they once again have to specify what they're repaying, how much they're repaying, and that is how that functions. Another interesting part of this application is the ability for users to withdraw their funds. So they specify their user ID. Once again, user, user one. And in the future, it can be any user that clicks on this function because it is use, utilizing message.caller. And in the candid UI demo, I'll show you what I mean. And um, this will take it out of the whole IC protocol and back into their canister or their specific wallet. And uh, one more thing I wanted to mention before I, we look at the candid UI is the reserve canister. Now the reserve canister operates in, uh, in essence as a liquidity pool. So it locks up cycles or AIC or, or ICP and determines liquidity of these tokens. So that determines whether or not users can borrow or lend a specific amount. So if we look into there, it's just calculating the amount of ICP available, the cycles available, the amount locked of ICP and cycles. So that is how the backend code is working. So let's take a look at the Candid UI. So right now, I've already done DFX uh, deploy, which I'll show you. I've started a local environment and I'm, I'm looking at the Candid UI. So I plugged into the URL, the Candid UI um, um, proper address, which for here it is, um, specified here, the candid UI canister on the local network is this guy. So you plug that into here and this is the URL and it'll bring you to a page like this. Now it wants us to provide a specific canister ID. So first thing we have to do is provide a treasury, go to the treasury and mint the amount of cycles and ICP that we need to give to our users so then they can interact with the product canister. So first I'm gonna mint a thousand cycles. We'll wait for that to call. And then I'm gonna mint a thousand ICP. And for the purpose of this, I'm just gonna transfer a thousand of those cycles to the user canister. And I'm also gonna transfer a thousand ICP to the same user canister. And then after this is done, our user should be supplied with these amount of tokens. So then we're gonna take a look at the product canister. And this is where all the functionality really is. So we gotta specify our canister ID. So now we're looking at our product canister. And the first thing we have to do once again is open an account. Now, what's tricky here is since this is working with message.caller and I'm the one calling on it, I and my user ID, my default wallet ID is the one that has opened the account. So when I add funds to it, I'm gonna use user as a canister and I'm gonna add um, cycles. I'm gonna add a thousand. And this is gonna deduct from the user and really go to my um, specific account. In the future, um, this can work for whoever calls on it and then interact with their um, wallet or canister personally. But for now, this is going into my specific account. And I'm going to also send the ICP to my account from the user. So let's give that a second. So now if I want to check my balances, let's say I want to see how many uh, cycles I have. We'll give that a second. And I have a thousand. If I want to check how much IC, how many ICP I have, Give that a second. And I have a thousand, so great. So now I'm ready to start interacting with the protocol. So the first thing I would wanna do, let's say is deposit. And let's say I wanna deposit, I don't know, 500 cycles. So let's wait for that to work. And let's also say I want to deposit 500 ICP. Let's wait for that to work. So let's check how many A cycles I have now. I should have 500 A cycles. 
because I deposited 500 cycles. So in return, I get A cycles as a receipt. And there you go. And the same works for AICP. So now these A cycles and AICP are earning interest, which is the purpose of providing to the liquidity pool itself and why investors or will want to do this in the future. But now let's say if I wanted to borrow and in particular, I wanna borrow cycles. I wanna borrow more cycles for whatever reason. I can only borrow right now up to 250 because I know the minimum ratio is two. And that is, this is, this is because I have 500 ICP in there. So I can use my 500 AICP as collateral for this borrowing. So let's wait for that to work. Perfect. Let's see what our cycles balance is. Give that a second. Each time I'm calling on this, it's going into the database and checking my information. So exactly, we should see 750 because I deposited 500 for my account when I originally had 1,000 uh, because of, that's the amount of funds I added. I deposited 500, so 500 is now A cycles. And then I borrowed 250 more cycles and now I have 750. If I wanna check how, much, how many ICP I have, then that could be done the same in the same manner. But right now my AICP is locked up because I am borrowing these cycles. Now, if I want to um, redeem my AICP um, for whatever reason to get my ICP back, I can do that. And same goes for my A cycles and cycles. But for now, let's repay our loan. We borrowed um, 250 cycles. So let's repay our cycles. Let's wait for that to work. And perfect. So now I've repaid my cycles. So if I check how many cycles I um, have, we should see 500 cycles. Give that a second to work. Sometimes with this candid UI, it can get a little slow and perfect. Now let's check how many AICP I have. Remember, this was what was held as collateral when I was borrowing. So let's wait for that to work for a second. It might have timed out. This sometimes happens when the candid UI is open for too long. So let's give that one more second. It did time out. I'm gonna request my AICP again. Fortunately, that does happen sometimes. And that's what I really wanted to show you. So once I repaid my loan, what happens is I was paying with interest to give the liquidity provider. So I don't get all 500 of my AICP back into my balance. Instead, a certain amount of that, in this case, an arbitrary interest amount, which was set by us in our product canister and which will eventually be dynamic, results in us getting less AICP back at once it's locked up. And that's the result that you get from borrowing. So that's just to illustrate the depositing, how you can check your balances through the product canister, um, how the user canister adds funds to their accounts, opens an account, they can deposit, borrow, repay, redeem, and um, withdraw their funds back into their account. So all this functionality is working properly at the moment. And what we will want to see in the future is to have this really working with real cycles and real ICP. So that will be implemented once we get past the phase where we're only working with these two user canisters, which is very possible now because of our database type structure. Okay, so now we'll get into the front end code and display. So we did our front code and code using um, JavaScript and HTML. And the way we did it is uh, by creating buttons that had uh, user inputs and functions that correlated with those buttons. So as you can see over here, I created a couple of classes for each function. 
and then included a button in that function. So when you have this, like for example, view current ICP token balance, that would be the name of the button. And then you'd have a correlating one um, over here when you have that function and it'll have like a keyed in response. So right now we're just using variables that have been predetermined. Um, but our hope is in the future to integrate uh, the Motoko functions into the front end. That is a little bit complicated um, because of its novelty. So we had to go ahead and determine an alternative solution for right now. And then you can see like the styles of um, the developers page and the about page. Um, and then in the script for JavaScript, you can see that I mainly only use JavaScript for the tabs because uh, you needed to have a tab route to other tabs when clicked. So this was a little bit complicated. And then the styles for the margin, the color, background, et cetera. But I also included a couple of styling elements over here. Um, for example, like the background color of the page, images, and things like that. So let's take a look at what it looks like um, online. So over here, you can see that you'll need to go ahead and like create your own account. Um, and then you can access your tokens and, and things like that. So this is a user page. Then we also have an about page. Um, which tells you a little bit about our project. So an introduction, an overview, what each canister does. And then we have a developers page. So over here, you can learn more about Dylan and I, and as well as the other research support that we received um, throughout the CS Plus uh, decentralized finance project. So for now, let's go ahead and um, look at the user page. So this user page, I will go ahead and test it. Um, I'll create an account for myself and it has a response page. Um, I'll view my uh, inputted variable, like predetermined a variable for my ICP balance and my cycle balance. Then let's say I wanna go ahead and mint, um, I, let's say 500 cycles. So it'll go through and then mint 500 tokens as well. I'm going to want to transfer 5,000 cycles um, and then transfer again 5,000 tokens just to keep things consistent. Um, and then let's say I want to withdraw 6,000 ICP. It won't work because I only have 5,000 in my balance. So we'll just see what the response is. So cannot withdraw 6,000 tokens in sufficient pounds. So this is um, just an example of what the page will look like uh, once we determine which functions are most useful to the users. But this helps give you a sense of what we want Project IC to look like for the user interface. And lastly, thank you so much for going through and watching our demonstration. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. Um, we welcome any feedback.